This Is Us is Network TV's most high-profile drama series with lots and lots of award wins thus far. I'm Rob LaCuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby, here with Michael Ungarano, who played Jack's long-lost brother, Nicky, this season, who we all thought was dead but apparently wasn't, and we got to then go back in time to see um, what his story was all about. Michael, what was the most challenging part of bringing this guy to life? I... Uh... I would have to say when when we when we meet up with with Nikki when he's in Vietnam, he, you know, not only is he a physical shell of himself, um, but it's he, we assume that he's been overseas now for a little over a year and um, he was a medic and so and he's also he, you know, we also assume that he's been taking some sort of, of 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 pills or something that he's sort of prescribed that himself to cope with the with the trauma and the anxiety that that he's been going through over there. So it, it's that it's that it was that mental headspace that that Nikki's in when we when when Jack comes to see him. And when Jack sees him for the first time, there's there's really no amount of of research and experience to 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 match that because you know that the Vietnam War w was such a traumatic and and specific and 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 horrific war for for these young guys and and you know what Nikki has seen and gone through it was. It was articulated a little bit in in this in in the story and and in the script and, and we certainly see some of it, um, but one can really only imagine or guess what that level of trauma and anxiety and and fear was was really like. So it it was it was a little bit of all of those things that and and on top of that it was also you know this brother dynamic appearing in the middle of a war yeah and so there was just a lot to play with and I, I would say that was the most difficult part but that was also what made it so rich and 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 complex yeah so i mean nikki is obviously suffering from some form of pdsd which is very common for veterans and he's also serving in the actual war itself and, and you're playing it kind of in real time and I'm wondering that even though you've alluded to this being not necessarily that easy to research for or prepare for, what were the things or the elements that you had to take on and what kind of maybe what kind of direction were you taking on to try to make this guy as authentic as possible? There was a, a, a consultant on on the on the show, this guy Tim O'Brien, who who wrote a book called The Things They Carried. And Tim actually co-wrote the the script in which Nikki was drafted um, with Dan Fogelman. And, you know, there, there's a lot of material in Vietnam and, 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 and Tim O'Brien himself is very outspoken. He's done a lot of talks and, you know, the Vietnam war as, as we learn it in, in school and as we're sort of, uh, you know, as we're educated about it growing up, there's there's a lot of information out there, and we know a lot more about PTSD and 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 what that was like um, for people coming back from war. But um, it it wasn't quite as well understood back then, and so uh, it's it's also the way in which in which Nikki was raised, and 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 the way you see it manifested in somebody like Jack. You know, the household they were raised in. These guys were these guys came from a, a slightly um, a, a very specific childhood. They, you know, they, they had a, a, an alcoholic father and, and the way they dealt with their childhood, uh, is, is, is specific. And that's sort of where we meet them is that we're, we're sort of meeting Nikki at this fork in the road where him and Jack are going to become very, very different men. And that, and that fork is really the Vietnam war. And so for me, it was, it was not only having an understanding of, of what it was like for guys coming back from the war, but also what that was like specifically to this guy and, and, and how his 
his upbringing and his relationship with his brother and his family informed that. And that, that was all really in the, in the script. And um, like I said, uh, you, we were talking earlier, but uh, it was one of, it was one of the best scripts I've, I've ever read that, that first script and all of them really, the writers do an incredible job mm -hmm. of, of, of bringing all that to life in, in, you know, very short amount of, <laughs> real estate in a script yeah and like it, it, i mean that's a blessing to have that to have the words on the page to, to read and to bring to life that there's a lot that i think the actors do need to do i expect you alluded to working alongside milo ventimiglia um as your brother jack on the show mm -hmm. um what did you both um decide to do to prepare for how they would interact with each other? Because there's a fam familiarity, obviously, between them, but there's also this element where they're estranged. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really all in that first moment when they see each other for the first time in, in about a year, when, when Jack comes to Vietnam and, and uh, you know, Nick, Nicky's shoveling shit from the latrine and, and Jack says, his name and he turns around and it's the first time they've seen each other. And it, it's this, it, it's this realization on for Nikki that his big brother is here. His, his, his hero is here. His protector is here. His savior is here. And also the realization that it's probably the one person who is, is most dangerous for him because Nikki with the help of, of whatever he's been taking in Vietnam and, and wherever he's put himself mentally has, has, has surrounded himself with, you know, he's, 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 a, he's, he's put a guard up. He's put a really strong guard up and he's just coping. He's just trying to get by. And Nikki, I mean, and when he sees Jack, that's a, that's something that's going to penetrate him. Jack is going to be something that, reminds him of where he is and where he's not. It's going to be the one thing that really makes him feel. And um, Nikki can't afford that. And so it's this really complicated relationship. And I, I also think Nikki's decision to go to Vietnam in the first place um, was partly due to Jack, partly due to the fact that Jack's been Nikki's older brother and his protector his entire life and, and, and the need to prove himself, um, as a man really. And so that was, that was something that was also pretty clear on the page, but the dynamic with Nikki and Jack and the way Milo and I approach it, that, that was something that was slightly unspoken. It was just in the chemistry between us and, and the fact that we knew each other beforehand, I, I think really informed a lot of decisions that you know we made consciously or subconsciously in how we approach these two guys yeah you know we were talking offline that um i was familiar with some of your work before and watching the show i, I saw your name in the in the credits and i was like michael Garano, who's he playing who's that and then i realized yeah. that you're yeah. nikki because you, you did have to um undergo quite a transformation to play this guy and you were unrecognizable to me and probably a lot of other people well, what does that mean to you to take on something that is completely different on a very high profile show. What does it mean to you personally and professionally? Uh, it was a great gift. I, I really looked at it as, as a huge challenge. It was not, it, it really was unlike a lot of roles that I've been able to play before. And not that I haven't been able to play complicated characters, but this character was both really specific and ambiguous. I think any actor would have had a very different take on it. And, but the script called for something very specific. There was no ambiguity in Nikki's voice or the fact that he was very different from Jack. That much was really clear. You know, Jack is very earnest and 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 present and direct. And and Nikki is a little bit more cerebral and over analytical and emotional. And and that was very specific, and that was very clear. But yeah, I don't get recognized for this is us people on the street. And beforehand, a lot of when I when I got the part, and when people knew I was going to play Jack's brother, people who had watched the show came up to me and said, "You were going to get recognized like crazy, like you've never gotten recognized before." And I, that happened once. People 
don't recognize me from the show, which I take as a huge compliment. I, 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 I think that's a great gift. And, and I, I also attest that to the script and, and yes, I, I, I had to, you know, look physically different, but that's, that's the fun. That's the mask that you get to put on when you go to work on, on a huge show like that. And it, it, it always allowed me to kind of, to go into it in, in a very grounded way. Yeah. Because, you know, the two or three hours that I had to go through hair and makeup and wardrobe, um, and then the, you know, the scenes that we were doing, Milo and I were so specific and, and intense that, you know, it allowed for my personal experience to be really grounded and, 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 and a real inside out approach, which, which really helped me, which I really, really was grateful for, you know? Yeah. You know, there's a lot of um, scenes that we can talk about specifically, such as, you know, your, your final episode, um, which is kind of at the tail end of your particular part of Nikki's story. But for me, I, I guess I'd love to know what the day was like when you were filming that pivotal scene with the local Vietnamese child in the boat, because obviously mm. it was that event that I think, speaking of forks, was another fork in Nikki's life, which I think impacted him greatly. And um what was what was that day like? Uh, and did did you find that particularly difficult as well? That day was one of the last days on set for me that we filmed that somewhere in California. It was cold. the 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 cold water and the cold weather actually really informed that day. Um, and it was uh, pretty upsetting. Uh, you know that that scene is is horrific, and that was the first. That was one of the first conversations I had with uh, with Isaac Aptiker, where you know he told me what Nikki's storyline was, and and it was it was this it was this story about grenade fishing and how it was Tim O'Brien's idea. And there's a little bit of it in his book, but not a lot. Um, but you know that it it this has happened. You know that this is real and. And as for the people and the time and the place, it's it's slightly different. But this story or this iteration of story is is Nikki's story, but something like it has happened before. And so it's almost like you are um there was a lot of there was a lot of care and and respect put into it by everybody involved. And it felt like one of those days that, you know, we were very isolated on this boat in the middle of this lake and, and it felt um and it and it just felt like we were really um, I don't know it, paying a tribute is is a weird way to say it but it, it it felt like everybody had took a lot of care to make this part of the story um, work and yeah. Um, and yeah it, because of that it was almost very focused and both and and a blur at the same time like uh, you know. I, I don't remember a lot about filming that day, which is funny. wow. Yeah, you know. Mm. Um, Other than that, it was really cold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it <was> fucking freezing. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't look cold, so that's, yeah. that's interesting. I had no idea. Um, well, my final question is a question I think you've you've answered before, but for people who don't know the the, the background as to why you only played a certain part of Nikki's life on the show that spans decades. Some mm. actors play older and younger, while others mm. don't. Like Ron Steffes Jones doesn't play his younger self, mm. um, and you handed over the reins to Griffin Dunn to play the older Nikki, living out his pretty miserable life in the trailer. What was yeah. it like to hand a character over to another actor? Um, it felt it felt appropriate, especially with a character like Nikki, who's seen a lot and has experienced a lot, and uh, you know. I think the oldest version that I I played Nikki from when he was uh, nineteen to forty four, and fair to say that he's a very different person either ends of that spectrum. Yeah, and um, and Griffin plays him I think when he's seventy and maybe even a little older, and so to me personally, I I, I was. I, I thought it was very appropriate and I was slightly relieved when they got Griffin because Griffin is one of my favorite actors. After Hours is one of my favorite movies. And I've known Griffin personally for almost 15 years. He played my father in a movie. Yeah. And so uh, 
and funny enough, when when I Griffin and I over, only overlapped on one day of filming, and uh, we didn't really get a chance to speak to each other before, but we went out to dinner uh, that night when we overlapped, and uh, also people were coming up to us on set that day and saying that they thought we were really sort you know mirroring each other's gestures or that we were doing each other and that there was something going on it was just it was just the writing it was just that we hadn't done anything and i i don't know it's if it's because we sort of if it's because we knew each other and had worked with each other before i'm sure that had something to do with it but again it was just that the writing was so clear and and uh yeah, this this character always had a very very pr specific perspective, and so um, yeah, it's just again a testament to how 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 good the writing is on the show. Yeah, absolutely, that's so interesting, Michael. Thanks so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. Yeah, man, thank you. Um, to all this is us fans, go to goldderby.com right now. And make your predictions so you can be you can prove that you are the smartest prognosticator in Hollywood. But before you go, click subscribe on this video and. Check out all of our other great chats with awards.